thank you so much, uh, Auntie Joy. Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, you're very welcome to this uh, uh, evening uh, prayer session. Uh, we thank God who has given us the grace to um, meet. And so um, even as we continue to we are continuing to share this, just pray again. We can never have too much prayer. God, we continue to exalt you. We continue to thank you for gathering us. We continue to glorify your name, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We continue to glorify your name as the sovereign Lord. We continue to submit ourselves unto you, God, that you will speak to us this evening. We continue to submit ourselves unto you, God, that you will minister unto us, so God, that Lord, even as we share in this topic of divine backing, a mark for possessing the territory, that God, indeed, there will be divine backing even for this uh, prayer meeting. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray there will be divine backing over this prayer meeting. God, we pray that you release all that is required for this day, the angels that are required, my God, your power and your presence, my God, in this prayer meeting. Will you uh, take charge of their airwaves? Will you, O oh, oh Lord, release your spirit upon us to minister unto us wherever we are in the name of Jesus? Will you release the blood, Lord, my God and my Father, to qualify us to be in your presence? Will you, God, my master, um, cleanse me, cleanse me, O oh God, as a vessel, and use me, God, to, uh, to, to, to minister in the name of the Lord Jesus. And God, even as your word comes forth, we pray that it will come forth with power. We pray that your word, my God and my Father, will come forth like a hammer. It will come forth like a fire that it will break the strongholds that have been around us, O oh God, my master. It will break the strongholds of whatever it is that the enemy has wired around us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we exalt you, King of kings. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Uh, amen. So friends, uh, again, you're very welcome. This evening, as I've been introduced, my name is Joan Kariango. And our topic for this evening uh, is divine backing, a mark for possessing your territory. Divine backing, a mark for possessing your territory. And uh, that uh, we are going to focus mainly on Joshua 11. Uh, the text we are given is from verse 1 to 23. But in the interest of time, I will just read uh, a few uh, verses. Then we'll, we'll pick up uh, the rest uh, as we talk about them. So from Joshua 11, verse 1, they, they we're given the whole text, but we'll read um, from verse 1 to 11. Let me read that so that we understand the context of uh, you know where we're coming from. So it says, And it came to pass, when Jabin, king of Hazar, had these things, that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon, to the king of Shimron, to the king of Achshab, mm -hmm. and to the kings who were from the north, in the mountains, in the plain uh, south of Shineroth, in the lowland, and in the heights of Dor on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and in the west, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites in the mountain, and the Hivites below, Hamon in the land of Mizpah. So they went out, they and all their armies with them, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude, with very many horses and chariots. And when all these kings had met together, they came and camped together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. But the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid because of them. For tomorrow about this time, I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua and all the people of war with him came against them suddenly by the waters of Merom, and they attacked them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who defeated them and chased them to greater Sidon, to the brook Misrephot, and to the valley of Mizpah eastward. They attacked them until they left none of them remaining. So Joshua did to them as the Lord had told him, he hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots with fire. Joshua turned back at that time and took Hazar and struck its king with the sword, for Hazar was formerly the head of all those kingdoms. And they struck all the people who were in it with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them there. There was none left breathing, 
Then he burned Hazel with fire. So um, you, you, you can read the rest of the text. Uh, and, and like I said, we'll pick up uh, some of it later. But what is going on in this scripture is that um, Joshua is leading Israel to take over more of the territory that God had given them. When we look back in Joshua, you know, in Joshua 1, we find God, um, you know, told Joshua as he's telling it, charging him uh, with the leadership of the, uh, of the children of Israel to take them over the, Jord uh, the Jordan. In Joshua 1, we, we, when we look at verse, uh, let me just read there. In Joshua 1 from verse 2, uh, it says, Moses, God is speaking to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole, uh, sole of your feet will, sorry, every, every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. So then verse 4 says, from the wilderness and uh, this Lebanon, as far as this great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. So God, th this land, God has given. And when we read back in Genesis 15, because they have talked about all these people who have, uh, uh, you know, the, the king of Hazor has gathered up. So when we read back in Genesis 15, uh, when God was speaking to Abram uh, about the land, uh, he, he actually specifies these different uh, lands. Genesis 15, verse 18 and 19, uh, when God was speaking to Abraham, he, he says, um, mm, let, let me just speak for verse 18. He says, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gigashites, and the Jebusites. So this land uh, is part of the land where this particular part where we are going now in, in, in Joshua 11 is part of the particular of the land that uh, God had given to Abraham, had given at that time promised uh, Abraham, but uh, even later, when he speaks to Joshua, as he's charging him to take the children of Israel over the Jordan, this is part of the land uh, that God had given him. So what we are establishing here is that this land, which uh, or part of which Joshua has already conquered uh, by this time, that and and uh, and the, the the rest which is ready to conquer, you know, even the one that uh, these people are coming up against him, that land had been given to them by God. But even though the land had been given to them by God, there were tribes that were sitting on this land. There were tribes that needed to be dispossessed if these people were going to come into their heritage because God had given them this territory as their heritage. But there were tribes that were sitting there. And so we see that by this time, Joshua has already conquered. He has conquered some of the lands. He has already conquered lands like the like Jericho, which we read about in Joshua 6. He has already conquered the land of, of Ai, which we read about in Joshua 8. And in, in Joshua 10, I think this was part of the sharing that was uh, we had last night in the overnight. In Joshua 10, uh, he has conquered uh, also uh, another set of lands, Makeda, Libna, Lapish, Eglon, Hebron, Deba. So he has conquered those. And so it, where we start from in Joshua 11, uh, it says when, 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 when Jabin, king of Hazel, had all these things, he had all that Joshua had uh, done, all the conquering that had gone on, you know, so then he, he has sent for support. So Jabin, uh, that's what is in, in verse 1, in Joshua 11, verse 1, it says, it came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazel, had these things that he sent, you know, for all these people. So he had all the conquering that had gone on. He had all the, the, the lands that had been, uh, you know, uh, conquered. And so he sent for support. And we, as we read, he sent for support from different kings. And when we, when we, we, we look at what the verse 4 says, we have already looked there. But it says that they came with all their armies. And the word of God is telling us as many as the sand on the seashore. And they had many horses 
they had many chariots. But verse 6 tells us that the Lord told Joshua not to be afraid because he was going to deliver them uh, into, uh, you know, deliver them into the hand of Israel. And they were going to even these horses, the many horses that they have come with, the many horses, the Lord is saying, you are going to hamstring their horses. Even these many chariots that they have brought, the Lord says, tells Joshua, you know, you're going to burn. Even the, the chariots, you're going to, 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 to burn. And so even from where we have read, uh, you know, starting from verse 8, we see that indeed Joshua defeated uh, these people, uh, this king, Jabin, and, and his group, and the, the armies he had rallied up, the support he had rallied up. They were, they were defeated just as God had promised. And the word of God tells us they left none. They left none. And they took Hazar. They took, uh, which, which the word of God has told us, it was like a major, you know, it, it was a major part or because the word has said it, it was formerly the head of those kingdoms. So they took that land and they left none remaining. Okay, even the cities, they even took the cities which have belonged to the kings that had come to, you know, to 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 to, to fight along with the to, to fight along with the, with Jabin. And so when we read there in verse 16, we're not going to read there, but verse 16 to 19 gives us a summary of the lands that Joshua took in battle. And so friends, what are we, even as we look back at our topic, we have said our topic is divine backing, a map for possessing your territory. So we are saying that in this battle, God himself was backing these people. He was backing, he, he was backing these people. He's the one who has told them, you go, I'm going to deliver them. They have told us they have brought up armies as many, okay, yes, made up of the 12 tribes, but you know, one group. But there's all this people that have been rallied up. We have not even heard that they had horses, you know, or donkeys, I mean, or chariots. They, 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 we, we haven't been told that they have, they've had those through the wilderness. So they have come up against a big army, but this battle, God himself is backing them, is backing Israel. And in fact, when we read verse 20, verse 20, it shows us that God was hardening the hearts. Let, let me just read there. Uh, verse 20 of Joshua Joshua, uh, Joshua 11 um, to show us, it, it is saying, for it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might utterly destroy them and that they might receive no mercy, but he might destroy them as the Lord had commanded Moses. So God himself was backing Israel. God himself is hardening the hearts of these people so that they come up in battle. You know, God is involved in this battle. And because God is involved in this battle, friends, there was assurance of, a, of victory. They, 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 uh, Joshua and his people and Israel, they're assured of victory. You know, in the physical, the odds were against them. In the physical, the odds are against Israel. Why? Because there's been uh, many people that have been gathered. The king has gathered, not King uh, of Hazel, Jabin, has not only gathered his own people, but he has brought up other kings to support him. So there are many enemies. They have big armies. They have told us as many as the sand on the seashore. They have many allies. Uh, you know, allies. They have uh, you know, many horses, many chariots. So in the physical, the odds are against Israel. But because God is on their side, or God was on their side, you know, they were assured of victory. So what are we saying? Friend, as a child of God, there's a territory that God has purposed for you. Just as he had purposed this land for the children of Israel, he had purposed them to take over this land. He made that promise to Abraham, as we have read in Genesis 15. And again, as he's charging, uh, you know, as he's charging Joshua to take over the land, he repeats that promise. And so friend, as there is what God has purposed for you. There is what God has ordained for you. But just like he had promised these children of Israel, and there were people sitting in those lands, there is the something, there is the enemy. There is what is sitting on the land. There is what is sitting on the territory that God has promised you that you need to dispossess. And so that divine territory God has ordained for you, friend, it has inhabitants. It has, you know, the, 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 it has inhabitants. It has uh, forces. It has 
people, forces sitting on that land, sitting on that territory, sitting in that promise that, you know, they do not want you to come into that territory. They do not want you to come into that territory. So there's where God wants, uh, as, and as we reflect, you know, there was a physical land that, you know, uh, God had purposed for these children of Israel. There was a physical land. But friends, as we talk about the territory God is giving you, it is not just physical. There are, th there, there, there are dominions that God wants you to come into. There are territories, you know, of control that God wants to, you to come into. Not They may not even be necessarily physical, but friends, there is something that is already controlling that area. If it is a spiritual territory that God wants you to control, just know that there is already forces that are controlling that you will have to dispossess. There is where God wants your relationship with you to reach, you know, even as we look about, uh, at that, that you know, uh, territory. There is where God wants you to reach in relating with him. But there are forces, friends, which are saying, no, 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 no. You cannot relate with God in that way because if you do, you know, you're going to be very dangerous. There is where God wants your family to be there's where God wants to take you, wants to take your family, wants to take your ministry. There's where God, you know, the work that God has ordained for you to do. But the enemy says, no, you cannot. There is, you know, that dominion, like I've said, that God has purposed for you, but they are inhabitants. So that territory, friends, as we are speaking, it may not be just physical. Yes, there could be a physical territory that God wants you to, 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 you know, to, to possess. They could be, but there might also be that physical dominion or physical possession that God wants you to, you know, to possess, but they are inhabitants. And so, friends, as we reflect, even as we, 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 we think about ourselves as individuals, when we think about the church, there is territory that God has purposed the church to take over. There are things that God has purposed the church to accomplish, uh, but there are forces that are currently running those spaces. There are forces that are running those spaces where the church should be having dominion. There are forces that are running those spaces. They are, even as we think about, for example, the nation of Uganda, there is territory that, you know, God has given the nation of Uganda, but there are forces that are saying, no, 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 you cannot come into this place. You cannot come into this dominion. You cannot control this matter. You cannot control the resources, your resources, the resources that you need as a nation. You cannot control, you know, maybe it, it is the, the, the people. You cannot, you nation of Uganda, you cannot have governance and control the people who inhabit you. No, we have to control you from elsewhere. But friends, when there is divine backing, it does not matter what you're up against. It does not matter how strong they are. You know, these ones had chariots. They had horses. They were very many. So it does not matter how many they are. It does not matter how many allies they have. You know, yesterday in the overnight uh, uh, Dr. Kiza, who was uh, sharing, said that you know sometimes we fret. You know, you 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 become you know uh, what can I say? You you start you know worrying because somebody has left your camp and has joined another camp. You know, because somebody has left your camp and has joined another camp, then you start to worry. You start to fret, and you you feel you are becoming fewer. Friends, it's not about the numbers. When God is backing you, it is not about the numbers. You know, it, it, when, when we look at um, battles that God has fought, even looking at this particular one, we have already established that these people, uh, when because when they write or the account of what went on, if they are saying these other ones were many as the son of the seashore, maybe actually they were not that, that number in terms of, uh, who has ever counted the sand of the seashore. But this is how they were seeing them. They looked so many. And so, friends, it doesn't matter how many have gathered. You know, the Lord's, um, the word of God tells us, I think it's in a, uh, somewhere in Chronicles, where King Asa, uh, the Ethiopians had come against him. And the word of God there tells us that there were 300,000, you know, 
but the enemy had one, you know, like three times, one million, and they had chariots and horses, about 300,000. So almost the, the number of people, the army that King Asa had. So it is not about the numbers. So as long as you have divine back in front, you are assured. You are assured of victory. You are assured of victory. And, and so we want to say then, why would you? Why would you have the divine backing? Why would you have the divine backing? Or why won't you have the divine backing? So I want us to just look at why would you have the divine backing? And I'm just going to give two reasons. There could be several other reasons, but I'm going to give two reasons why you would have divine backing. Number one is that the territory, that territory that you want to possess or that territory that is before you to possess, just like these lands were before the children of Israel to possess, that that territory is what God has purposed for you. You know, as we have already read, you know, in, in Genesis 15, we read, you know, when God was promising Abraham, we have established also in Joshua 1 that this land, this land is land that has been purposed for the children of Israel. And so uh, if God has purposed you to have that territory, if God has purposed you to have dominion over a certain area, if he has purposed that you possess something, friend, he is God. You know, someone uh, recently was asking, but, you know, uh, looking at Israel, looking at Israel and looking at what's going on in the area of Gaza. And, you know, so if God has purposed that this land is for these people, it doesn't matter. He is God. He can choose who should be what. He can choose who should have what. He can choose who can possess what. He is God. So what is your role? So yes, God uh, purposes the land. What is your role? Your role, my role, our role is to know the will of God. It is to know the will of God for our lives. It is to know the will of God for our families. It is to know the will of God for our nation. It is to know the will of God for the church or wherever God has promised us, uh, I mean, uh, positioned us. It is to know the will of God. Know the territories that God has purposed for you. What is, what is it that God has purposed you to be? Where is it that God has purposed you to, you know, to have dominion, to control, to possess? Where is it? What, does, what is it that God wants you to have? What is that office that God wants you to take over? What is that mm, a place, you know, whether it is a, a land, a physical land, that God has purposed for you? So the Israelites, as they entered the promised land, there are areas God told them not to touch. Why? Because he had not purposed them to take over. He told them to pass through. He told them not to take, they were not going to take the land of Edom because, the, you know, the Edomites were their brothers. He, he told them they were not going to, Take the land of Moab. You know, there are territories that God had told them, you are not going to touch this land. You're just going to pass through this land. And so, friends, there are things which you will just look at. There are things which you're just going to pass by. Why? Because they are not what God has ordained for you. So we need to ask God. We need to seek his direction over different things, to know his will, so that we know, you know, what is the will of God uh, what, where has he purposed me to, to take? If it's a work, if it's, if it's a job, is this the job God has ordained for me or this job I'm just supposed to look at? It doesn't, it's not about feeling, I feel I should. If it's the will of God, he will back you up, you know? But if you're just fighting because it seems like a nice job, or if uh, for those who are looking for spouses, if this one seems like a nice wife, or seems like they will make a good wife. This one seems like they will make a good husband, but not the one God has purposed for you. Then you're not going to have the divine backing. But if that's the one that God has purposed for you, the divine backing will be there. It doesn't matter who is sitting on that land. It doesn't matter who is sitting on that territory. It doesn't matter who is sitting in that office. If God has ordained that for you, if God has ordained for you a position in your family, it doesn't matter who is looking at it. You know, sometimes people want to have all this dominion. But if God has not given them that dominion, they're not going to have the divine backing. And so that is number one, why you would have the divine backing, that God has purposed that territory for you. Two, 
The other reason you'd have divine backing is that you have the qualifications for possessing the territory. When we read the book of Joshua, in Joshua chapter five, we see that the Israelites were circumcised before they could cross the Jordan. You know, they had to be circumcised. Why? Because the land was for people who were in covenant with God and that covenant was established through circumcision. Yes, they were descendants of Abraham. They were descendants of Abraham to whom the land has been uh, you know, uh, promised. They were descendants of Abraham. Um, you know, and God had given that land to Abraham and said to you and your descendants. But there was a there was a covenant. There was supposed to be an agreement in, in agreement in that covenant. And that covenant was the sign of that covenant was circumcision. And so before they could take over the before they could be circumcised, they didn't qualify because the sign of the covenant was a circumcision. So the question is, do you have the qualifications for possessing the territory? Do you qualify for possessing that territory? If God has purpose, if God has promised certain things for his children, do you qualify? Are you a child of God? You know, so, let, let me just read in, in Galatians uh, chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, um, even as we look at qualifying, do you qualify to take over the territory? You know, there's what God has promised about that territory. Do you qualify? So when we read Galatians 3, uh, I'll just say uh, that we could have read from 15 uh, up to 18, but I'll jump that part. You can read it. Uh, but in, in, in Galatians chapter 3, from verse, for verse 26, verse 26 specifically, it says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, let me also read uh, verse 27. For as many as, as many of you, as we are baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So the children of God, the children of God, uh, the sons of God, they have they have become sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, you know, through faith in Christ Jesus. That's how you have or we have become, uh, you know, the, the, the sons of God. Let, let me jump to, to verse 29, still of Galatians 3. It says, and if you're Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if there are things that God has promised, do you qualify? Do you qualify as a child of God? Have you, you know, are you born again? Have you had faith in, in, in Christ Jesus? And then the other thing, have you matured? Because we are saying, do you qualify? You know, there is that, um, uh, the, the qualification for possessing the territory, we, uh, believing, there's believing in Christ Jesus. There is um, being a, a, an heir through faith in Christ Jesus. And then the other aspect of that is, have you matured enough to possess the territory? Have you matured enough? Because when we read uh, verse, let me read again, verse uh, Galatians 3, verse 29, and I'll read through up to chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Galatians 3, 29 says, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Verse chapter 4, verse 1 says, now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though, the, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. So friends, you might, yes, you are born again. And God has promised my children, my sons, this is their heirs in this area. They will possess this and maybe you qualify. But... Have you matured? Because he's saying that if the, the, the heir is still a child, you know, he will still be like the other one who is a slave, you know, and, and has to be under guardians and stewards until the appointed time. So yes, there could be things that God has ordained for you, but you have not yet matured. So God, there are things he will not allow us to reach because we have not matured. Why? Because we are going to destroy it. Or maybe even destroy ourselves. We, we might even leave him, you know, because there are things, maybe God looks and says, you know, if I give this person this ministry, they're going to destroy it. 
because what? They have not yet matured. If I give this person, you know, this job, they are going to leave me, you know, because what? The enemy is going to divert them. So there are things that God will not allow us to reach if we have not yet matured. If he, he may look and say, if I release this person into this marriage, they may destroy it. They may destroy that marriage. Okay. And so have we matured? Have we matured enough to possess the territory? It might be that there are things we need to deal with. Otherwise, the enemy might use accusation against us, even as we look at qualifying. There might be things that we need to deal with because the enemy will come against us and, you know, accuse because of the accusation that's against us. If we have not dealt with certain things in our lives, you know, we may not be able to take over the territory because God will not go against his word, you know, and that is what Satan will stand on to accuse you, to hit back at you when you're released into that place. And you may be dispossessed. Why? Because God will not go against his word. If he has said the wicked or the ones who have done this, the ones who worship idols, the ones who do this, they will not do this. Then if we have not dealt with that area, you know, the territory may be withheld from us. He will not bend his word for us. And so at times we have these foundational issues that oppose us, you know, and so they hinder us from taking over the territory. They hinder us from taking over the territory. They make us, you know, not qualified to take over the territory at that particular time. So we need to pray and ask God to mature us. We need to ask God to mature us. We need to labor as we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, you know. We need to, to labor, you know, to work at it. It's not about, you know, uh, you, you know, sometimes we sing uh, this Yenaza KBB and we dance and whatever, and that's where we stop. But you know, we need to labor at that salvation. When we read Colossians uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 6, um, verse 6 and 7 says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught you know, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So we need to, we need to mature. We need to, our roots, we need to walk. We need to be rooted, to be built up, you know? So we need to ask God to show us any barriers in our lives that stand against what God has purposed for us. We need to ask the Lord, you know, um, what is it that is hindering us? And, and even as I was preparing, I remembered a, a time when uh, I just had a dream uh, when I was, you know, putting on, I was like, I was going to minister somewhere and I was putting on this white garment, which was so, 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 it was just glittering. It was so, so, so white. But then something, a little, little drop, which was like a nib of uh, a pen, that, that's, that's how small it was. A, a small black dot dropped on the left side, actually where the heart would be. Uh, physically, it dropped on the left side of the garment with a heavy weight, doom, you know, and the voice told me, your heart, you know. And so what I understood that there are things God will not, God was asking me to deal with my heart. There are areas where he's not going to let me go because of the state of my heart. Maybe, you know, you allow, you know, to be wounded, you know, all the time you are you are, you are, you know, you know, what can I say? Meditating on what people have said, even yourself, you are so angry and bitter, you know, lacking maybe love and you're not going to love his people. So what are you saying? If he gives you ministry to minister, are you going to love the people? So there are territories you're not going to get into. That time he was telling me until I deal with certain things in my heart, you know? So sometimes it's things like that. God sees your pride. He sees your unforgiveness. He sees your selfishness. He sees your materialism. He sees, you know, how you idolize possessions. And so he's not going to allow you to come into certain territory. And you have to wait until you deal with, with, with that matter. So, you know, it, like sometimes we want God to give us command maybe in ministry. But God, is, he sees that if he does that, you're going to crush the people. You're going to crush them. 
So, uh, and I just remembered, we're not going to read there, but in, in, in the book of Luke, Luke 9 chapter, sorry, Luke chapter 9, verse 54 and 55, the, 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 the disciples were walking with Jesus and they went into, um, they went into uh, a village, in, in, in a Samaritan village, and the people there refused, they rejected, they did not receive Jesus. And so James and John, they said, should we command fire to come from heaven and consume them? like Elijah did. And Jesus says, do you know what matter or what manner of spirit you're of? And so, does the manner of spirit you're of allow you to possess territories? Does it allow you? And so, friends, if we qualify for that position, if, the, if like I've given those different reasons, and there could be others uh, that you can think of, but if we qualify for that position, divine backing will come. And it is a sure way to take possession you will be the kind of minister, if you want to be a minister, that God has purposed. You will have the family, the kind of family that God has ordained for you. You will do the work that God has. You will be in that position that God has purposed you to be. You will take possession. You know, you will possess the possessions that, whether they're material things that God has purposed you to possess. He will deal with the enemies that are stopping you. He will dispossess inhabitants that are hindering you, just like he did for the children of Israel, you know. And, and sometimes, you know, the enemy could present barriers, you know, like in the form of sickness. He, he will heal even diseases that have no name. Even those diseases that have a great name, you know, sometimes you look at the disease and the disease has such a great name that everybody who hears that disease, they will tremble. God will deal even with those if he has purpose that you will come into that territory. Whatever the enemy has put in front of you, God will remove it if there's divine backing. So sometimes you feel you don't qualify. Sometimes it is that you feel you don't qualify. Maybe what? You don't have the education. Maybe by the education you have, you feel you don't qualify for certain things. I'm telling you, it is not about the education. Even the education we look at, sometimes we are looking at the education. The, you know, I, I haven't yet got this master's. I haven't yet got this PhD. I don't, know that. I don't yet have this degree. I am lacking this diploma. Friends, God can qualify you. He can find ways. It doesn't matter. Don't say, oh, I missed to go to university at this age. He can take you to university at whatever age if he feels that education is what you need. And so it doesn't matter. Is it your current financial status? Sometimes those are the barriers. And you look at your finances and you say, how can I do this? How can I be this? You look at your current position, maybe it's even a position in the family. Maybe it's the position where you are. You look at your current position and say, how will it be? How can I take possession? So what needs to be dispossessed might be like giants. When we read in, 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 in this particular scripture still, in, in, in Joshua 11, I'm not going to read there because our time has gone. But in Joshua 11, when you look at uh, verse 21 and 22, it tells us that they were Anakim. Uh, and these were giants. And, and uh, Joshua uh, destroyed those, you know, by the divine backing of God. These uh, were destroyed. Joshua destroyed those Anakim, those giants that were in the land. So you need to listen to what God is telling you, friends, even as I summarize. Listen to what, what is God telling you. We need to seek him. Where is he directing you? Follow that direction. What has he purposed for you? To, to, to possess, you know, if you know where God, you know, Joshua didn't just go pointing at land and say, should we go here or should we go here? Should we go here? Should we use this? No, 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 no. There was direction. He was heading to a land that he had been told. And so we need to have that knowledge. What has God purposed me to be? What kind of work has he purposed me to be? If I want this job, is that the will of God? If I want this ministry, is that the will of God for me? If I want to do, you know, if I want my family to do this, is that God's will? So listen, what is God saying? Follow that direction. Deal with any disqualifications in your life and trust God to bring you into that position. position because he has the means, he has the capacity. Yesterday we were talking about, you know, the mighty warrior, God as a mighty warrior. And we are, because we don't have a lot of time, we don't even have, we don't have the time to talk about what he can use. But he can use, he has the capacity, he can use all creation. 
He can use weapons that you have never thought of to bring you into that position. And when he has purposed, he fulfills his word. Friends, let's trust God. Let us, you know, not accuse him of, you know, sometimes we accuse him like he doesn't care. If he has spoken, he will fulfill. And so let's just rely on him. He will bring us into that position. When we have that divine backing, we will possess the territories that God has purposed us to possess. Um, God bless you. Let me stop there. And, and let me just pray briefly. Uh, I don't know whether the person who's supposed to lead us in prayer is on. Let me pray briefly, then I hand over. Father, we thank you for giving us this, your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us and speaking to us about uh, possessing territories when we have your backing. And so, God, I pray for myself and all the people on this call that, Lord, you will give us the, the, the faith to rely on you. You will give us, oh God, the assurance. You will help us to that it will settle in our hearts that whatever you have spoken for us to come into, that indeed you will help us to come into that place. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And our time is fast spent, but let us pray into the following things. Thank you, Professor. Let us receive the word for, let us receive the divine backing, the word for divine backing. And let's all unmute and pray. Father, we receive divine backing. In the name of Jesus, we receive the divine backing over the things that are, that pertain to your will and your agenda. In the name of Jesus. God will receive divine backing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So the issue of divine uh, backing, you see, prayer, we can only succeed if we pray according to God's will. I want us to ask God to, for patience and the grace to hear from him what he wants us to do in particular issues. And this one goes for context. I don't know for you what it is, but every one of us, there is something in particular for Joshua and his generation, there was a particular land designated and God spoken out that God had spoken about. So let us pray and ask God for the grace, the patience to hear from him that we do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for grace to hear your promises in the name of Jesus and the patience to remain in your timing in the name of Jesus. God will pray that you raise the standard in the name of Jesus. We pray that God you help us to stop meandering we ask for forgiveness. Friends, let us ask for forgiveness. When we have made up, many times when we have made up our own programs and we expect God to back us, God, we ask for forgiveness. For the many times we have chosen our ways and to do our own sins. And at the same time, we expect you to back us. And then when you have not backed us because it is not your will, it serves nothing in your kingdom, we also decided to be offended at you. So God, we ask for forgiveness. In the name of Jesus. God, we ask for forgiveness. For thinking, for presuming that we, we need your backing, even presuming that it will be there when we have not heard from you. And we are seeking and running after things for our own glory. So, God, we ask that you forgive us. We, as individuals, the church leaders, in the name of Jesus, but also as a nation, we ask for forgiveness. And we use powerful words that the Lord, we even pray an opening prayer or a closing prayer, mocking you when we have not had your mind. So, God, we ask for forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying. God will pray. Let us now pray 
that God will, that which is of the Lord, we will receive divine backing and experience divine backing. Because when you receive and experience, there will be tangible results. Our Father and our King, we ask that you give us your divine backing in the name of Jesus. That we will experience, we will hear you, we will experience and get tangible results in the name of Jesus. We rebuke, let us rebuke the spirit that preempts the plan of God. You hear God, you do the right thing and the enemy just stagnates everything and you get disheartened. God, we know you as a God who delivers what he has promised. So God, we ask that in this particular project, the particular issues you have called us to do as a church, but also as individuals and as families, that we shall do and we shall have the desired results according to your plan in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that even as we enter into this, uh, as we are in this season, we pray that there will be divine backing for people who are traveling. There will be divine backing for people who are coming from different places. But also the preachers tomorrow who are in your mind, who are in your plan. I pray that God they will receive divine backing. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you.